Hello, this is Teach, here with the Valentine's Day Special, and I'm here to start you off with a simple question. Have you ever fallen in love with a video game before? And I mean love at first sight, as in, this will be a game that once you see it, you know you won't be able to keep your hands off it. For me, that game was Octopath Traveler. And yes, I know that's only a working title at the moment, but that title is perfect and describes the game aptly. The graphics alone are enough to grab anyone's attention, but the fact that you have the Bravely Default team working on it and you know it's going to be good, the boost system combined with the brake system gives for some pretty unique combat action which improves upon Bravely Default's Brave system. But what got me most was the path actions. Each hero has his or her own way of making a mark on the world. One can challenge just about any character to a duel, while another can make anyone follow her. And that's just two examples. Add in the voices and the stories that you can get out of this, and you've got me making this thing into an abridged series. Which kind of got me thinking. If I were to go all out with this, and go in balls deep, how would it work? With only the demo out, there is still a lot that I don't know about this game. For those of you wondering, and for most of you who haven't, I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions about this game that nobody has asked. Here's the thing. This game is called Octopath Traveler, and Octo means eight. And in turn, you can choose eight characters. Based on the trailers and the demo, we know about two of these characters, Ulbrich the Warrior and Primrose the Dancer. Who they are and what they do are pretty important. The other six, however, are a mystery, and the developers of this game have taken great pains to keep it that way. And while we know nothing about their names or what their motives are, there was one bit of info that can give us a glimpse into most of their classes. Apart from our warrior and dancer, we also have a huntress, a merchant, a thief, a chemist, a white mage, and a black mage. Now I know that I might not have the class name spot on, the white mage might be called a healer or a cleric, the huntress could be called the beast tamer or the archer, the chemist might be called the alchemist or the salve maker. I really don't give a flying fuck. But the point is, we are now one step closer to unlocking the mystery of the other six. But getting back to that one question, who is the protagonist? Which one will it be? Well. Let's find out about the other six before we decide on that, shall we? For this one, it's both simple and a bit complex. When you play through the demo and recruit the other character, you are told in the full game that you can recruit any of the eight protagonists. But the real question is, can you get them all? Will it be like Final Fantasy VI where you can recruit a bunch of characters and swap them out in a party of four? Or will it be like Secret of Mana 2, where you pick your three heroes and you are stuck with them for the entire game? We know that Octopath allows you to hold a party of four. But can you only get four people, or will you be able to get more and swap them out? As of now, I'm not sure. But either method could make the story very interesting. In this case, I'm not asking about the plot. I'm more interested in the story structure. You can choose one of the eight protagonists, and you can recruit any of the other seven. Okay, then what? I've heard many people say that this could be the next Saga Frontier, a game where you play as seven characters, each with their own unique storyline. However, while the storylines are unique, they are also linear and surprisingly short. My first impression was that this would be similar to Secret of Mana 2, where you pick out your protagonist, but the storyline is larger and a bit more linear, where all roads lead to Rome. I don't know if that'll be the case either. Selecting one of eight protagonists, each of them with their own unique abilities and motivations, only to have them follow a linear storyline seems... wrong somehow. So here's my thoughts. First off, notice that the character select screen is on a map, Based on that, I've gathered the possibility that once you finish your prologue, your first task will be to move in a circular direction and gather your companions, kind of like you did in Final Fantasy IV's World of Ruin. 
it'll probably be done in a non-linear fashion as well, especially if you are limited to acquiring only three companions. There was also an interview that stated that the primary concept of this game is going on a journey, and that the player would choose one of eight protagonists and freely have a journey with the world. So I'm thinking this game might be a bit more open-ended than I thought. Many barriers that will hurt you to certain points of the stories will probably be far and few in this game, and while it sure as hell won't be anything like Breath of the Wild, Octopath Traveler's story won't nearly be as linear as most RPG games. Although, if that turns out to be the case, then I'll have to think very carefully as to how I'll go about structuring my episodes and my seasons. Because yeah, Octopath Traveler Machina Bridge will be the type of show that I'll have to do season by season. And finally... Yeah, stupid question I know, especially when Let's Plays are a prevalent force on the internet. But I do have a technical hurdle or two to jump. For one thing, I am new in the ways of the capture card. Whether that means I'm not using the right one, or if it's just a software issue, I don't know. But I've never been able to successfully capture gameplay footage from outside my computer. And yes, that goes for Octopath Traveler Machina Bridge as well. I've had some other issues that I've wrestled with in making Octopath Traveler Machina Bridge, but I don't feel that I need to go into them right now. The main thing is that if I want to have the freedom I need to make a show like this, I'm probably going to have to record it myself. If you have any recommendations on what capture cards to use, both the hardware and the software, I'd appreciate it a whole lot. So yeah. That's my deal right now. Who knows what the future holds for this game, but I'm looking forward to whatever new things this game brings, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys when this game graces the Nintendo Switch. Until then, teach out! <laughs>